Hi everyone, today we're doing a presentation on dragon rope. Long Paul, at the end of this presentation, you're going to design your own project. <clears throat> Reading a dragon rope. What do you see? How? Let's hand that honor. Uh, dragon. <laughs> dragon! Sure. Long, hand hand, you can eat long. What about the dragon? Is it the kind of Harry Potter dragon? Or uh, honor is next. I see Parker, see, she has me. Honor. Okay. Well, I noticed that it, it has um, five fangs. I mean, claws. E R S S O. Um, room. It has five claws. It means it belongs to the emperor, empress, or royal family, not just anybody. Cool, Parker. I was gonna say that. Five claws, yeah. and it's not the Western kind of dragon where there are wings and can fly. This is more like a crocodile or reptile. Wait, where's this fifth claw? Oh my. Hmm. Where's the fifth claw? E R sense Oh. Those. Uh, oh, but four. Oh, yeah. Four arms, but five claws. And yellow, Huang Se, can only be used. This kind of yellow can only be used for a royal family. Okay. So you can think about when you design your dragon robe, Cheo, what would be the background color of your robe and what it represents? You can think about that. Next. Okay, you said that word. I was looking for that word. Well done. Symmetrical. If I put a mirror here, it means it'll have the same reflection. So in your design, you should have some elements of symmetry. Not exactly. For example, there are two cups on this side, cups with tiger, but it has a plant on this side. But there is bat here, it's symmetrical over here, the clouds are symmetrical. In a minute, I'll tell you more about the uh, Qing, Qing Dynasty and also a little bit about the Ming Dynasty. How would you put it on? Good question. You, uh, there are some buttons here. You, once you open it, it opens up. And this opens up too, and there's a button that ties here and here. So you tie you button, 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 button. What symbols do you see? Some of them that are written here are not in this picture, but let's just look at it. What are, you can shout out the answers. What are these? Bats. Um, bats. bats? Why are bats on a dragon's robe? Because they have wings. They have wings. And the word for bat, fu, mean, uh, sounds like luck. So it's a very lucky symbol. And it also doesn't really look like Bats. When you're designing your robe, you gotta think of elements that represent you and you can stylize it. So you, when you draw a basketball, it doesn't have to be a basketball. It could be a different color, different shape, shade. It just has to reference basketball. What else do you see? Waves. Um, I see like an orb. Like, what? Like cool. Let's go through those. You see waves. Yeah, waves represent representing you are taming the sea. Yeah. I see like a orb like next to the dragon right there. These? Yeah. Flaming orbs, cool. You? And the, um, the bats look like baby dragons. Here? Yeah. They look like baby dragons. They're cute. And they make it pink. That is so hip. And what is this? 
And does it look like the character that you all drew? Mountain. In the mountain. And this is just this, all this intricate design is just this little collar here. Oh, all see, just see here. Yeah, and you see symbols. This is the Nirvana, is a Buddhist symbol. Oh yeah, I love that. It's the, the Nazi one is the reverse way, but this is the oh, Buddhism yeah. oh, yeah. symbol. Mm, right. This is pre-Nazi, and you see the fur here a little bit. Also, there's like three colors of like above the other ones, like blue, yellow, and red. Oh yeah, that's the three balls. Yeah. These ones, yeah. the mountain. I I can see them now. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. No, right to the left. These. Yes. Oh, I wonder if these jewels are part of the map. I don't know what they are. Cool. Jewels, waves. Oh, so cool. And this is a character that is stylized. So when you're designing your robe, some of my students in the past used a character in their name, and they made it into a symbol, a symmetrical symbol. Ooh. Ah, Mm-hmm. Power. Microphone. <laughs> a megaphone. Yeah. And I look at the shades of blue. It's each. It's embroidered. And if you, like I said, if you do a basketball, it doesn't have to really, really look like a basketball. And you can layer it with different colors. But I like how like they made it three D. Yeah. How, right. How did they make it three D? Just different shades of blue. And then here. Thanks for noticing it. It made it look three D. Um, here are two cups with tiger, representing metal, I didn't know that. And then the bottom, waves, waves mountain. mountain, and clouds. And you keep seeing these motifs in lots of robes that I'll show you. Symmetrical design, Connor talked about that. And then the, the last layer looks like that, um, the like setting for like, um, over the moon. Oh, the setting of over the moon, wow. Cool. Thank you. Forbidden City, Gugong, Zai Beijing is in Beijing. The emperors and empresses and court officials from Ming Dynasty and Qing Dynasty lived there. No one lives there anymore. You can visit it for a small fee. Qing Dynasty was the last dynasty. After that, no more emperors no more empresses. That's it, 1911, the last one. This is Emperor Qianlong. I chose this photo, even though it's, it's by Italian, Italian Jesuit painter, but he captures the riding culture of the Qing people. They are from the north. They rode through the Great Wall, came into Beijing, defeated the Ming forces and established a new kingdom. The Qing people were riders. This is the emperor riding his own horse. Nobody's, you know, carrying him in a cart. And if you were an official, you better know how to ride too. And so you see later on on the robe designs how it helps a rider. Qing Dynasty also had this figure called Cixi. Cixi was an empress and she had a lot of power, probably the most powerful woman in history. And she's a fashion icon. People say they change, she changed outfits 10 times a day and they're all different outfits. Jewels, embroidery design, similar patterns, but I'll show you an example in a moment. This is her day clothes. It's not even a special occasion. I don't see any gold threads. What design elements do you see? I feel like a phoenix right in the middle. A phoenix right in the middle, just diagonal across the row. Bold. This is such a bold design. It's not symmetrical here, but here yeah. there are yeah there are definitely some. Oh, it's a peacock. <gasps> peacock feathers, yes. And it's like a lot of flowers. So. Yeah, peacock feathers. And guess what? Some of the robes use real peacock feathers 
as a uh, thread. I don't know how they make thread out of peacock feathers, but here is an embroidered peacock feather. Do you know what these flowers are? They look like a flower that we know that's pretty common. Magnolia. Magnolia has much bigger uh, petals. Um, they look like roses, but they're peonies. Have you heard of those? Oh, before? peonies. It's a more a very densely budded flower. And I love how it repeats here. And the gold on black is so chic. But I can't buy it. It's at the Met. Oh. So Parker's going to get it for me. <laughs> uh, and this is in Ireland. Lots of these robes are museums all over the world. Wait, how Found often are they washed? washed? How often are they washed? I saw where it was, so I should probably throw it out later. How often were the Empress robes washed? The answer is never. According to two dynasty records, making one set of robes required 50,000 meters of gold thread, 6,000 peacock feathers, and two years of labor. There was even a department of 2,600 people devoted to crafting imperial robes. Because of how ornate these items of clothing were, and the lack of dry cleaning technology, it was impossible to wash them with water, otherwise they would fall apart. Once they got dirty, they would simply throw away the expensive robes and give the emperor a new set. When the emperor died, the clothes would be buried with him or burnt. Wow, well, you are right, never. I have a question, why it, if it takes two years to make them, how do they never run out? Do you plan ahead? Do you plan ahead? ahead. Some, I think she's, she's not, it's on average. These ones with golden threads and fully embroidered, it takes two years. There's a New Year gown. So for the first day of the Chinese New Year, New Year, the emperor wears an all decked out gown with gold threads. That takes a year or two years. Then later you'll see just day clothes that only probably take a few months. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, how did they make gold into threads? Wow. I know, I know that because I read a lot about this. You take a silk thread, you wrap, and it's, it's by hand. Uh, you wrap a very thin red-ish paper over the thread. Then you put gold foil. How do you make gold foil? Melting it? Yeah, you melt gold. You melt gold. I mean, I don't know how to make it. You melt gold and wait for it till it cools down when it's thin. It's thin enough that you can manipulate it to make, to wrap gold foil onto the thread. Very labor intensive process. Great question. This is just a day, day shirt, no big deal. So, honor only maybe a few months. Uh, <laughs> not super expensive, probably. Kind of goofy looking because it's a big <laughs> island of dragons. Kind <laughs> <laughs> of like, ah! Kind of goofy looking. Yeah. And this is not a Qing style robe because, let's see. Look at the riders, the, like the emperor. He, have like one design. he has a cuff that covers his hand, but not these ones. These, this is a summer robe because it's cropped, and cropped. this is really not for riding. This is in LACMA in Los Angeles. It belongs to Da Huan uh, Emperor. Felix. Ooh, this one is super cool. Not vegan. Uh, all vegan? Not, not vegan. Not vegan at all. Oh yeah, that one's made out of leaves. Yeah. <laughs> These are fur of animals and belongs to Emperor Kangxi. Uh, riding, it's a big part of Qing culture, and riding in winter is cold. So you need to be warm. And the leaf sleeves, and I drew it to here, I think. Here, I try to make it like that. When you wear it, it comes over your hand. Why? Oh. So your hands are Yeah, when you're riding, it covers here. Look at the color. It's a specific blue color. That is the same blue as this building, this temple. This is called Temple of Heaven. It's in Beijing too. So if you go to Beijing, you go to the Forbidden City, you keep going the Royal Road and you hit this temple. This is Temple of Heaven and it has this blue this was worn by Kangxi when he has to go to
to the temple of heaven once a year to pray for good harvest. So you have a dress code as an emperor too. You can't just decide to wear Uggs with no back. You have to wear court prescribed dress code. Day of prayer at Temple of Heaven, you wear this blue. You don't like it? Too bad. You have to follow the code even though you're the emperor. Too bad. Really bad. Too bad. This is Tian Tan, Han Piao Liang, and it matches the blue of the sky. Pretty cool. Uh, this one is worn by a court lady. We know she's royal. Why? E five claws. Sans five claws. Again, symmetrical cloud, flaming jewels. Oh, maybe just nine months to make. And you see the bun here better, right? There are two buttons. One, two. That opens up. Oh. One open, opens up. And this is a little neck, separate piece. There's a lot of effort to put on. Uh, it's pretty easy. I have one at home. I don't want to bring it because of dirty middle schoolers. I'll show you in a moment. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, this one is so, oh, just semi formal. Though. And this, uh, I, they will also wear pants under, a loose pants. Gold threads, though, even though it's just semi formal, made of gold and silk. And uh, if you get to touch it, we never do because it's a museum case. I imagine it's textured. Mm -hmm. Wait, you have a picture of yours? Yeah, it's not very good. I'll show you. <laughs> mine, mine is, I mean, these are the good ones that is museums it have. Huh? It's authentic. It's real. Yeah, it's authentic. It's very rare. This is extremely rare. Somebody um, has to repair the gold threads to make it pretty new. A close up. I mean, this is you know, it would be this size. It's this size, but zoomed in. And the detail is incredible. And I was looking for where to buy a dragon rope. I went on this website, Christie's. Christie's is an art auction house. <laughs> Christie's, they list treasures from every culture. And I was looking, to, maybe I could get one for the class. And this was uh, about a million dollars. And it was already yeah. bought. Dang. And you as I was it. doing research, I found out who bought it yeah. in an obscure web page on LACMA. It said they own this. So it's here in LA. This robe is here. But it's not on display in LACMA, the Los, Los Angeles Art Museum, Los Angeles County Museum of Art, but it's here. What? No. This is going to take five dollars. <laughs> this is just an informal outer gown. No big deal. It's in the Beijing Museum. And it doesn't always have to be dragons. This is just flowers, not just flowers. These are flowers. These are um, roses or peonies. Wow. Oh, this is called the summer robe. Can you tell that it's a lighter material? Yes. More uh, thin, because Beijing gets really hot too. Mm -hmm. And silk with gold, and it's in Hawaii. So how did these robes get all over the world. Um, Aren't they supposed to be in Beijing inside the palace? You have a guess? Yeah, honor. Either they sold them because they just like didn't have use them anymore because they couldn't wash them. And then, or, um, oh. or they tried to take over and then they stole it. You mean the countries who yeah. took over? Yeah, yeah. China didn't sell off any of these treasures, but when other countries like Britain and France invaded Beijing, they looted. Do you know the word loot? What's the synonym yeah. for loot? Stole. Steal. Yeah, they Ooh, stole. They, huh? Valuable. Yeah, they steal valuable stuff. They looted a lot of art from China and lots of other countries. And that's how I got my dragon rope because someone, once upon a time, someone stole it. And then it's now on the market. You can't use that just for That's my dragon rope. Well, that's really big. That's cool. Yeah, it's cool. I think the, I had Doug wear it just to see how, how it's done. And it fits him, just it hits at, at his ankle. So it's good for you, it will fit you. 
And I have this because my dad went to an auction in Hong Kong and got it. And it's, this one is not super expensive because there are no gold threads. It's a thinner fabric, but it's brand new. It, it's never been used. And if it had been used, it had been, it'd be thrown away anyway. So it's not, it's new. And it was stolen from the summer palace in Beijing by the Brit British forces when they invaded Beijing. And they took a lot of it back to England and now they were selling it in Hong Kong. <laughs>